Welcome back everyone. So after popular demand, the inventory series is back. So I don't remember exactly what we did in the last episode. It's been a while, but what we have currently is the ability to click and drag items around our inventory. Uh, we can also drag these apples and we can also stack these apples. These can't stack on top of each other. Instead, we swap. If I click away from the inventory, it jumps back to the next available slot. So that's all good and all, but there is no ability to currently unstack items. Um, so what I want to do today is the ability to right click on a stack, say nine, and we pick up five of those. We pick up half the stack. That's it. Let's get straight into it. This one is going to be a simpler one. So we'll see how we go. So the thing you want to load up first is your inventory manager script. So I'm going to open that up in my code editor. Now, what makes our system so good is the fact that it's so expandable. We have these um, button click events here. So when we click on a button, our code does the rest. We have everything sorted out and our code will just do exactly what we want it to do. Um, so all we have to do is add a, another function here for begin item move. So we'll say begin item move half, in which case in, rather than setting moving slot equal to that, we're going to do a little bit of modification. Um, what we have to do is a way to detect if we've right clicked instead. So I'm going to change this comment to we left clicked, just so we know. Um, and now I'm going to put an else if input dot get mouse button down um, one. That's the code for right click. So we right clicked. And I'm basically going to copy this as is and paste that here for now. So that means I'll right click and left click at the moment. Um, we'll do the exact same thing. Um, we don't want to do that, obviously. So <laughs> we're going to fix that up at the moment uh, real quick. So we're going to have an end item move single. So if I'm holding a stack and I right click, I only want to drop one item from that stack off. And then I want to negate that from the stack I'm currently holding. Um, so we're going to define that for uh, that function. Our, when we right click and we're not holding an item, we're going to begin item move and we're only going to pick up half the stack. So I'm going to copy this function that we have here for begin item move exactly as is. And I'm going to call this begin item move underscore half. And I want to call this function instead now when we call um, up here, I want to say begin item move underscore half. Now we can define this function however we want. One. So every single time we right click on the stack, what do we want to happen? everything in this function, right? So that that's why our code is so good because we're using different classes to manage different things. We're able to just set the code as is and it will basically work around whatever we want to do. Um, and this is how you should be programming as well in your own games. Uh, that said, what we want to mo modify here is we say original slot equals get closest slot. So this is the slot we have right clicked on. If it's not equal to null and the um, well, if it's equal to null or the item there doesn't exist, that means there's no item in that slot or the slot doesn't exist. Um, in which case, for example, we may have clicked outside the inventory. Um, return false, we're not going to do anything. Now, if moving slot, and now if that, that isn't the case, then we set the moving slot equal to new slot class original slots. Um, our slot class is defined here. So in that constructor here, we're taking in a slot class and we're just setting the item and quantity. Now we also have another slot class here, which we can set the item and the quantity manually. And that's what one, that's the constructor I want to use. So I'm going to say original slot dot get item. And then original slot dot get quantity. But I want to say divided by two. Now this may give us an error because if I'm holding nine items, it's the quantity is obviously going to be 4.5, right? Um, divided by two. So the quantity is an integer so that that will round it down for us. So it will just cut it off at four. The problem is that we will actually lose an item in the process because half of nine, right? If I split nine into two halves, I've got 4.5 and 4.5, but the int will just cut off the 0.5. So now I have four and four, which means I lost one item in that process and that's not good. So I want to say mathf dot round two ints and I'm going to make this two F and put that in brackets. So now that's going to give us um, five of those items. Now I can say, um, sorry, this should be sealed to int and that's going to round it up like that. Now that means if I right click, I pick up five of the nine stack, right? Um, if you make this floor to int instead, that will round it down. So it will pick up four out of the five stack. 
but I'm gonna say round two ends for now. Now we say original slot dot clear because we're uh, we've wiped all the information from that slot. We've you know picked it up. Um, that's not what I want to do. I want to say dot set quantity. Well, sub quantity actually, um, and sub quantity is a function which basically negates quantity minus equals the quantity we want to take off. And the quantity I want to take off is literally um, what I have here. <laughs> so. Um, if I copy paste this exactly as is, that should work. Moving item equals true. Refresh UI, true. Okay, beautiful. Uh, now if I test this, this should actually work. When I right click on that stack of apples, it should pick up half of it. And when I left click to drop it, then it should drop the um, whatever I'm holding in my hand. Okay, so I've got five apples here. I right click, there's three apples left. I place and I got two. So I actually picked up the smaller half, uh, which is interesting. Splitting the big stack of apples, the four evenly works. Now, if I have nine and I right click, I will pick up four. So that's interesting because I thought I programmed it the other way around. <laughs> um, I guess not uh, because I got rid of the round. Okay, this should be seal to int. My bad. I thought I changed that. There we go. Okay, now that should work. Okay, so we've got five apples. I right click and I picked up three, right? Six splits evenly perfectly. If I have nine, I'll pick up five. Beautiful. Now, if I right click and I'm um, holding apples, nothing happens at the moment because we haven't picked, uh, coded that function in. So I'm going to code that function in. And as you can see, these functions are actually quite small. They're simple um, and they obviously get the job done. So <laughs> uh, by being able to split all our methods into different functions, we're able to do a lot more now our end item move function is a lot more complicated um, and there's a reason for that is because there's a lot more conditions and things that could go wrong <laughs> so what I'm going to do is copy this entire function again how we did um, previously I'll control C that and then I'm gonna control V and I'm gonna name this end item move underscore single save that and then I'm gonna change the function that we call here when we right click and item move underscore single. There we go. Beautiful. Now we just have to program this. Now there's a few things. If we want to end item move on a stack that already exists or an empty slot, we don't want to actually be able to do that. So this function that we're going to be writing is going to derive off this. Okay. So what this means is now, if we click off the inventory to drop an item, we're not gonna be able to drop that item. If we right click on a, uh, stat, on a slot that already contains an item, we're not gonna be able to drop the item there because we don't wanna be able to drop one onto you know a stack of swords. Uh, we don't wanna be able to drop one apple uh, and we can't swap our hand out because uh, we're not dropping the whole stack. So this function that we're writing here might actually be a lot more easier to do and might actually, um, we might be able to copy this bit instead because we don't have to do any of the swap swapping stuff here. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna delete all this extra content and paste that in. Cool, now we just have to manage uh, this sort of stuff. So what I need to do is say moving slot dot sub quantity because moving slot exists obviously. So we're gonna say dot sub quantity and we're just gonna sub one because we're just gonna drop one item. Um, original uh, slot dot add quantity. We're gonna add one and original slots dot set item dot add item. Hold up, this might be <laughs> add item. Yeah, so we wanna add item and the item we wanna add is, um, so we don't actually need that line. The item we wanna add is our moving slots dot get item and we're going to add one of it cool now there, there is an issue with this we only want to be able to do this if we still have items in our hand right if not then um we don't want to run this function so what i can do is after we've placed it is moving item so if moving slot dot get quantity so we've placed it we've negated one quantity if the quantity is now less than one so it's equal to zero um then we want to say is moving item equals false because we're not moving an item anymore. Um, and otherwise, then do this. Refresh UI either way. 
Now, end item move, do I say moving slot dot clear? Yes, I do. So I'm going to do that here as well. So this and then moving slot dot clear. So that empties the item we have in our hand. Now, that should actually theoretically work if I did that all correctly. Um, now, the chances I did that all correctly first try is quite low, <laughs> considering it's been a while since I've opened this project. <laughs> okay, we have an error in our console, I think. Or is that just Unity being Unity? Okay, so I've got five apples. I can't right click to drop any at the moment. Interesting. Uh, wait, there is something I've done wrong with the logic here. If original slot equals null, then do that. We don't need to check for this though. Now, one thing I actually forgot to do in the begin item move half is that if there's only one item, it should pick up the entire slot, if that makes sense. So I'll show you guys what I mean. Uh, I just noticed that when testing it there. So let's have five apples. I right click and then there's two apples here. If I right click this, there's obviously one apple. If I right click this, there's zero apples. And that gives me a kind of weird infinite apple sort of situation. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, we need to fix that, obviously. So let's see what we can do. So end item move, no, not there. Begin item move half. Um, what I need to do is original slot dot sub quantity. That if original slot dot get quantity is equal to zero, so there's none left, then I want to say original slot dot clear. Um, and that means we've picked up the entire stack. So let's see how this works. Okay, so I've got four apples. Um, one apple, right click, and it picks up the entire stack. I can't click. Okay, perfect. Now I've got five apples here. What happens if I right click to drop one? It drops one and I've got four in my hand. I just can drop another, got three in my hand. Drop another, got two, one, one. Okay, cool. Now I can stack these up again. Let's say I drop picked up half okay that makes sense i drop one and then can i drop it onto existing stacks no i can't so here's the issue if i right click on a stack of apples that already exists what i need to check when i end the item move single is if the slot i'm trying to add to um already contains that item so if original slot dot get item is equal to moving slot dot get item Then, well, they should only check if original slot. So if original slot is not equal to null, uh, original slot dot get item is not equal to null. Okay, so there's an item there and it's equal to each other. That's fine. Then I need to do a little bit of a different logic else. Then I can do this logic here where I just add the item there. Okay, the logic I'm going to do here is just add quantity, right? Add quantity, I'm just going to add one to it. That sounds simple enough, right? <laughs> the sub quantity from my hand either way. Um, if it's equal to that item, then add one to that stack. Otherwise, add a new item to that position. Um, yes, that makes sense. If moving slot dot get quantity is less than is moving item, yeah, because that means we've emptied the items we have in our hand. Okay, let's try this out. Okay, so I've got five apples here. I can drop one, two, three, four, five, and then I have nothing else to drop. Beautiful, so that actually works. So, yeah, that works perfectly. Very nice. I'm happy with that. <laughs> um let me know if there's any issues you guys come across when testing this i've been testing this for a bit and i can't actually see anything wrong with it they still have nine apples in total yeah we are not losing any data that is good perfect so now we have the ability to split stacks and you know drop a little bit of items not all of it which is good that's exactly what we want <laughs> um in our inventory so that's really good i'm happy with the way this is coming along in the next episode, we're going to go into saving and loading. So we're going to write a to string function that we can save to our player prefs. And then we're going to write a from string function, which we can load from there and load the information into our inventory. So that's going to be a little bit more complicated, but a lot of fun. So tune in for that one. I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Take care and peace.